What was the marginal cost of producing the second one? It means how much extra did you have to pay beyond producing the first one to produce the second one? So what is that? We had to go from 108, so that was six dollars. Okay, how about from uh, the third? What's the marginal cost of the third? That means how much extra did you have to pay to go from the second to the third? So what was that? 108 to, that was 10, right? Okay, so that's called the marginal cost. So here, in this example, the marginal cost is always the same, right? It's always 1,800. Right, if I go from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, always going to be 1,800 more, right? But here, it's not, it's changing. Okay, so the marginal cost is not always the same. It's always the same if it's a linear model, we'll call it a linear model, but if it's a not linear model, uh, it's not the same. Okay? Is that clear? Okay, what do we mean by the word model, by the way? Um, so, what does that mean, model? So if you think, it, yeah? Okay, maybe, but um, not anybody else? Okay, well, you know, if, you, if you're talking about a model, like two, uh, two images come to mind for me. One is like some person who's walking down wearing fancy clothes, walking down a runway wearing fancy clothes. clothes. That's not the meaning. Um, but another is like a model airplane or a model car or a model house. So what is that? What's it so there's obviously a difference between a model airplane and the real airplane, right? right? So you can't fly in a model airplane, right? So a model airplane isn't, doesn't have all of the stuff that the real airplane has, right? It only has certain parts that sort of, that are maybe useful for something, you know, like maybe you want to play with it or so you want to do something else with it. So it's not, it's only, it's kind of an abstraction of the real one, right? It's not the whole thing. It's only part of, of the, right? Same thing with a model truck or a model car, right? It's not a real truck or a real car or a model house, right? So like if you're an architect and you um, are going to build somebody a house or you're going to build a new skyscraper, you know, you, what you do is you build the model of it first, and you take it to the client, you say, is this what you wanted? And usually they'll say, no, I didn't mean that. You know, I wanted the door to be over here, or I wanted something else, right? So that you avoids a lot of expense, right? Because if you built the whole house, or the whole skyscraper, and then they told you that they wanted that door to be over here, not over here, that would be a horrible mess, right? But if you just do the model, right? So models are useful like that. Right. So when we, but when we talk about um, uh, in mathematics or in economics, we talk about a mathematical model. So we might say this is a mathematical model for the cost. Okay. So it's not the real cost, you know, because the real costs are going to be a lot of other things, right? There'll be many other things that you have to think about besides just that, just this one hundred and just this x. Right? It's going to be much, much more complicated than that. So this is like that. It's just like a, like a model airplane. The only part of it, or a model house, it's not the whole thing. We're not considering all the details, right? But we use it because, you know, in order to consider all the details would be basically impossible, right? If you're talking about a model economy or even a model business, I mean, a, a business or an economy, right? You could never write down everything, right? So you make a kind of simplification, and that's called the model. And a mathematical model means, you know, it's going to have math in it. It's not going to be made out of paper and, uh, and wood, right? It's going to be made out of equations. But still, it's the same idea in the sense that you use it as a simplification of the real thing. Okay? So that's called a, math that's called a model. So this is a mathematical model for the cost. Okay? So this called this would be a nonlinear model, and this would be a linear model. Okay, 
Obviously, a linear model is simpler than a nonlinear model, right? And if you had to do, you know, solve equations and solve x for y or solve y for x, it's easier if it's linear than if it's not linear. So, you know, sometimes we might, even though we know that this is more accurate, we might use this one because we can use it, we can manipulate it better, right? So we'll make a more simple model because we can do more, we can get different, we can manipulate it better and get certain kinds of results out of it that we couldn't get with a more complicated model. Okay? Okay, let's go to the next one. So what's that say? What is the cost, what is the cost of manufacturing the, oh sorry, we did that one. What is the cost of manufacturing the 11th piano? So do they want the total cost or the marginal cost? Marginal. You want the marginal, right? Now, since this is linear, you don't have to do anything really. You can just, you know it's gonna be 18, right? Okay, but if it's not linear, you don't know that. Okay? And what is the variable cost? The same thing, it's 1,800. Okay? And what is the fixed cost? 1,600. And, okay. Now, how about, uh, and what is the marginal cost? We already said that. Okay, so what about this, these pictures? Which one is the best representation of the cost function? So, obviously, we already saw that the cost function is increasing. So, you can immediately say, it can't, shouldn't be this one, and it shouldn't be this one. Right? So, you just knock those out. Okay, so then the other two are these two, so which is the right one? So this one looks like the y-intercept is negative, right? And what does the y-intercept stand for? That's when x is zero, right? So what does that mean, when x is zero? That's the fixed cost, right? When x is zero, you get the fixed cost, right? So the y-intercept is the fixed cost. So this one is saying the fixed cost is negative. Well, that doesn't really make any sense, right? So it must be this one. Okay? Okay, any questions about it? By the way, they have a watch it here. So that means we could watch it. Let's see if this works. Cost. A piano manufacturer has a daily fixed cost of $1,200 and a marginal cost of $1,500 per piano. Find the cost, C of X, of manufacturing X pianos in one day. Use your function to answer the following questions. On a given day, what is the cost of manufacturing three pianos? Okay, so we already did that. Okay, but they do have a watch in here. Okay, so you can use that. All right, so these are all, uh, some of the, okay, those two were the same. Now this one's a little bit different. So here you have your newspaper, the newspaper, and the production costs are $72 per edition. So this is confusing, you know, it's kind of confusing. Does that mean, are we producing editions, or are we selling, are we producing copies? It's kind of annoying, right? But anyway, what they're talking about is they're producing, there's uh, copies, right? So you have just one edition, and then how many copies are you going to make within that edition? So I don't know why they have to make it this complicated, a little, I mean, extra complicated. But anyway, so it's um, 41 cents per copy, and this is what? What's this called? The fixed cost, right? This is the fixed cost. And what's this? That's the selling price. Okay? So the what's the um, what's this? C of X. Seventy-two dollars plus point four one X, right? Okay. Now the next concept is the revenue. Okay, revenue is another word, we didn't use that yet. And that just means how much you're getting. 
how much is coming into you. It doesn't, it ignores the cost. So, what is that? What's the function for the revenue? It's, yeah, 61 cents per copy, so that's what? 0.61x, right? So this is going to be 0.61x, right? Okay? All right, is that clear? Because this is, you're selling it for 61 cents per copy. Okay? Next thing is what? The profit, right? So what's profit? It's the, it's how much is coming in, which is revenue, minus how much you have to pay out. Right? Let's write this down, by the way. What is this? 72 plus 0.41x. Okay, does everyone agree with that? Okay, so the profit is just R minus C, right? Revenue minus cost, right? So what is that? It's this. Oops, can't do that. Minus. in there or not, but it's that, right? Okay? So that is called the, now actually we should simplify it, right? We can do this and this term together, right? So we can simplify it. So that's going to be the profit function. Okay, any question about that? Okay, and then what profit results from selling 500 copies? So how do you figure that out? Just put in 500 for x, right? Okay. Okay. So I think these are all basically the same. Well, no, a little bit different here. All right. One more thing, though. Another word that they use is this word. And what does that mean, break even? So if you say you broke even, it means like you didn't um, lose and you didn't win. Okay? So in terms of this business situation, it means you didn't lose money and you didn't make money. You broke even. You didn't, right? Okay? So basically that's when the profit is zero. Okay? When the profit is zero, you didn't make any money and you didn't lose any money. Okay, so, but let's do, we didn't make the revenue function, but what was the revenue function before? Six, 0.61x. So the revenue is 0.61x, right? That's how much they sold for. And what was the cost function? 72 plus. Okay? Everybody agree with that? Okay, now let's um, plot the cost function. So let's put a 72 here. Okay, so what's it, what's it going to look like? It's just going to be a straight line, or starting from here, right? And what's the slope of this line going to be? 0.41, right? So let's draw that. Let's say that's the slope. Okay? So this is the cost function. And what's the revenue function look like? So what's the um, y-intercept here? Zero. Right? There's no y-intercept. I mean, the y is zero, right? So it starts here. Right? But what's its slope? 0.61, which is 
Which has a greater slope, R or C? Uh, R does, right? So, so this one is going to have a greater slope than this one. So it's going to start lower, but it's going to have a greater slope. So it might look like that. Okay? So that might be R. Okay? So how about here? If we uh, sell this many, then the revenue is here, right? That's the revenue there. Right? And the cost is where? Here. That's the cost. Right? So there's more cost than revenue. So that's called losing money, right? right? You're losing money. On the other hand, if you're up here, then your cost is here, but your revenue is up here. So what? Your revenue is more than your cost, so that's called making money, right? Profit. And where is the break even? That's when you don't lose or make any money. That's when the revenue equals the cost, right? So that's here. Okay, so this is the, um, let's call it um, X, B, E. Okay, that's the number that you have to sell in order to break even. Okay? So that's, um, you can just say that. Okay, and that's going to be where the profit is zero also. You do the profit function, it would be zero for this x. Okay? Now, it, because these are both linear functions, I'm sure that you know how to find the break even point. Right? You, just, the, the, you have to just take two linear equations and solve them. Right? So everybody knows how to do that, right? So you can find the intersection of the two lines, right? But if they're not linear, it might not be so easy, right? Suppose the cost function looked like this, and the revenue function looked like that or something, right? I don't know. Then, you know, it's not going to be so easy to find those points, right? But in the case where it's linear, it's simple, right? You can find the intersection of two lines, okay? So they ask you to do that, and they assume that it, they give it, I mean, they, it's linear, okay? Any questions about that? Okay. That's everything, oh, here. Okay, this one says, so what does domain mean in mathematics? That means the set of values that you can put in for x. The set of acceptable values for x. So over here, in the, all of these examples, x can never be negative, right? That's, so we say negative numbers are not in the domain. Okay, and actually, you know, x can't be, we don't, we're not going to manufacture 1.88888 pianos, right? So x can't be fractions either. Okay, but anyway, at least we can certainly say that x can't be negative. Okay, so the domain doesn't include negative numbers. Okay, so that's what the word domain means. So let's look at this example. The hourly operating costs of a plane, again, they throw in a lot of extra, oh, what should I say? What's that? Um, when, when uh, somebody, when a plane is, go is going to bomb somebody, they sometimes they throw out all this other stuff to make the um, anti -dif anti what's it called the anti missile systems get confused, right? So they throw out a missile this way and a missile that way, so that uh, anti missile systems you know, get confused and they think, oh, that's the plane, or that's the plane, right, instead of me, right? <laughs> so they're, what's that called? It has a thing. I can't even think of it. But anyway, it's like uh, distractions, right? So they're throwing in a lot of distractions here, okay? So try to get rid of, try to see through this distractions and just pick out the important math stuff, or the important part to the problem. 
So here it says the hourly operating cost of a plane, which seats up to 405 passengers, is estimated to be, okay, so what, what is all this? So this is about the operating cost of a plane, okay? And the, how many seats are there in the plane? 405, okay? And uh, cost per hour is this, okay? And I guess what they're saying, that it doesn't matter whether there's one person on the plane or 400 people on the plane, the cost is the same, which isn't quite true, right? Because the gas will be different, right? 400 people weigh a lot, right? So that's gas. But anyway, they're, they're ignoring that. So this is again like a model, right? They're ignoring details, okay? If an airline changes, charges its passengers a fare of $100 per hour. Okay, I don't know if airplanes charge per hour, but maybe they do, I don't really know. Um, so find the hourly profit uh, it earned as a function of the number of passengers. Okay, and they're saying the variable cost is zero. Okay, that's what, remember we said that doesn't sound realistic, right? Because the cost, if you have 400, it's gonna cost more than if you have um, one, right? But they're saying, no, just ignore the variable cost. So in other words, they're saying that this is the fixed cost, but there is no variable cost. But it's hard to see that because they're talking about hourly costs. It's like, huh? It's all, I think it's kind of confusing. But anyway, what they're finally saying, if you really think about it, is the, the fixed cost is that, and there's no variable cost. Okay, they said that. So the